Hey everybody, it's Craig Becky here, and in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to set your white balance on your Panasonic GH5. All right, so I use a couple of different methods, and you can use this for different cameras as well. We're going to go to the GH5, and I'll show you how to set the settings in a second. I just want to go over the different methods. So I have a Lastolite. Now this is a gray card. It also has a white side, and this just folds up and goes in your camera bag. So I've been using this lately. Now also, you can get different types of gray cards. This is more of a solid one. And then also you can use an Expo Disc. So this is an Expo Disc and how this would work, you put it in front of your lens and point towards the light source. So if you're using lighting in the studio, you'd point towards that, get an accurate exposure, and that would help you get an accurate white balance. Now also, you can use the Kelvin settings in your camera. So for example, if you're outside, daylight's around 5600 Kelvin, you could set it to that the only issue with that is if you move to the shade, that's a different temperature and your white balance is going to be off. That's why sometimes having a gray card is helpful. Now also I use the spider checker and you'll see that in a second when we go to the GH5 and you can use the gray patch in post so you can take a shot of that for every scene as well. So a couple different methods. Normally I just set it to 5600 if I'm outdoors and I try to fix things in post but it's probably a good habit to just take a shot of a gray card if you move to a different lighting situation, as well as having something like the spider checker in your scene. That's gonna be helpful, especially if you're using two different cameras. You wanna make sure both cameras are properly white balanced. So when you get into post, not, you know, you'll get a situation where one might be a little more yellow than the other. It could be a real pain. So we're gonna to move to the GH5 now, and I'll show you the different methods for setting that up. All right, so here we are, we're looking at the back of the GH5. You can see there's the spider checker, and here I have my gray target. So what we wanna do is look at this waveform monitor and get a good exposure on the gray target. You can see as I move it away, how the exposure changes. We're trying to go for about 50, that middle line there. If you look at it, the exposure might be a little high on that gray card. So what I can do is I could just change that to about, let's say three, five, bring that down just there. Okay, that's a good exposure right there. Now what I wanna do is press the white balance button. Now once I do that, I'm set here on number one for my custom uh, white balance. Now it'll say select white set. I can click on that. We pick the gray card, I hit set. Now you can see that changed. So we have a more accurate white balance. Now I'm going to switch to the GH5. I'm going to turn that on. All right, so now the GH5 is on. We've switched to that. Now you can also take a shot of the spider checker as well. And you can see this gray square here. That's the gray square that you would use in post. So if you had this in every scene, that would work as well. Now we're going to go back to the Canon. All right, so there's another way you can do it as well too. If we go to our white balance again, if you come over here, to your Kelvin settings. Now, if I push up on this, you could see we're at 5,600. So if I was shooting outdoors and I wanted everything to be at 5,600, I could just do that. And now we're shooting at 5,600. Let me just go back to the GH5 to show you what that looks like. All right, now we've gone from the custom white balance on the GH5 to the 5,600 setting. So that might look a little different. So that'll give you an idea basically of how you can set either the Kelvin temperature or a custom white balance. Now you also have other settings as well. All right, so if I go to the white balance, you can see we have different settings. We have auto white balance, which I never use. Then we have, this is a daylight setting. This is a cloudy setting. I like to know personally roughly what temperature I'm set at. So I often just use the Kelvin temperatures. So in the studio, I might be between 5200 and 5400 at home and then outdoors, I might be at 5,600. Although it's probably a good idea, depending on the situation, if you move to the shade, to do the custom white balance method. All right, let's do a quick recap before we go to the computer, and I'll show you how to do this in post-processing. So you can use your Kelvin temperature, which we just covered. You can use a gray card to get an accurate white balance. And also an important factor in getting a proper white balance is having a proper exposure as well. So I use a Sekonic L four seven eight D. It's a Lightmaster Pro L four seven eight D. Now I can use this for photography with my strobe lights in the studio, but I also have video settings on this, so I can set my shutter speed and my ISO, and it'll tell me roughly 
an accurate aperture. So it's a good starting point. Sometimes it's a time saver. So I use that as well. Now you can also use the waveform monitor with your GH5 to really help you get an accurate exposure as well as the zebras. Now let's go to the computer and I'll show you how I use the spider checker in post as another method of setting my white balance. All right, so here we are looking at the timeline of this YouTube video and here's my GH5 footage. Now you can see over here, this one looks a little more blue. That's before I did the color balance. I'm gonna drag that over onto the timeline here and you can see this is a 4K footage and I'm shooting in 1080p because of the Canon. So I'm gonna just back out so we can see more of that color checker. Now you can see that the white balance obviously of the GH5 footage, it's looking a little more on the blue side. Now one thing you can do is if you go up to color here in Adobe Premiere Pro, you can see we have our little scopes on the side. You can see that the red, green, and blue, they're off. There's a white balance selector. Now this isn't totally perfect, but if I click on this and I click on this neutral gray square on the spider checker, you could see that's shifted our white balance. And it's not too bad actually. You could see here that that's aligned the scopes on the left-hand side. You could see it's made an adjustment to the color temperature and the tint. So this will get you more in the ballpark. So having something like a gray patch, the spider checker, that can help you as well. Now it's really kind of up to taste when it comes to color grading. So you can make further adjustments, but this is great to have this in your shot, especially if you're in different lighting situations. So I think it's good. Two methods really. If you're shooting in daylight, set it to 5600 Kelvin and have this or do a custom white balance. Some people have said they've had color casts on their gray card, which really screwed up their white balance. Watch out for that if you're doing a custom white balance. Make sure if you're shooting in a bunch of trees that you don't have a green color cast on your, on your gray patch. That could affect things as well. If you want to be cautious, you could shoot at 5600 when you're in open sunlight. If you move to shade, you can warm that up, maybe switch it to 6000 Kelvin doing it that way. But anyway, I wanted to show you how to do that in Adobe Premiere Pro. Hey, it's Craig Becker here again. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just hit that subscribe button right now. Also, feel free to share this video on the web with your fellow photographers on Facebook groups and in forums. Now, one last thing before you go, hit that like button and leave a comment. What kind of videos do you want to see about the GH5 in the future? Just let me know in the comments section below and I'll shoot more videos about the Panasonic GH5. All right, thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.